Right, let's imagine for a second that you've been drawing for a while and you're just in a rut. You're just a little bit stuck in the style or you're not happy with where your drawing's going. You find your, your urban sketching is just it's not quite doing it for you and you're looking at other artists and going, God, oh, well, it's just so much nicer than my own. What do you do then? It's time to try some drawing exercises. It's time to mix things up a bit and say, you know, am I getting too much obsessed with detail? Am I losing a little bit of the life in the drawing by not being as confident with my mark making as I could be? Maybe. So I've got four great tips for you today. Tip number one is thinking silhouettes, thinking layers. I'm going to draw quite a complex scene here. And as you can see, I'm going to split it up into layers. There's going to be elements in the foreground. There's going to be elements in the mid-tones, mid-ground. And then in the middle ground, there's a few more silhouettes to put. And as we get further back, there's going to be stuff in the background. But thinking in silhouettes and thinking in simple layers can help break a drawing down. And it can free you a little bit up from the sort of tyranny of detail. Tip number two, you want to freshen up your drawing style. This might seem counterintuitive in a way, but stop drawing stuff. Just stick to lights and darks. You know, just start to draw in the dark bits of a, a drawing. Um, you can draw, or if you have some toned paper or dark paper, concentrate on the light bits. That way, what you're doing is what you would call a value study. So you're really just looking at those light and dark elements. Now, that is a technique that you know, we all have seen used by watercolourists and charcoal painters and people like that, but you can bring that to your urban sketching. You can just concentrate on the light bits or the dark bits. Now, if you're not sure in a picture which is light and dark, it sometimes helps me to squint my eyes and just have a look at your scene or your reference drawing, and that will tell you what are the lighter areas or the darker areas. So tip number three. Before I discovered continuous line drawing, I was very detail-obsessed as a, an artist, and I felt I'd often be holding a pen at the very end and I'd be doing lots of little tiny little detail work and the more I did continuous line drawing the more my hand worked further back to the pen and the more I would just hold it at the end and I'd get freer and more loose with my line style. Now I really like that way of drawing. It might not be for everyone. Some people like tiny little photorealistic drawing. Good for you, you know, not for me. Um, but I think if you can work looser and you can work freer, uh, you can start to be a bit more expressive with your art. And actually what it does is it develops more of your language. It develops more uh, of your feel. That said, the whole point of being on this channel is not to be like me. I don't want you to, your work to look like mine and therefore it be successful. I want your work to look like your work because that's your language as an artist. But if I can help you develop your style, then we're winning, okay? So do try continuous line method drawing. You can do anything. You can pick up an old camera or a teddy bear or a, a hat or your hand and, uh, and try the continuous line method. It's a wonderful, wonderful technique. Um, I've done a big demo of it somewhere up here. Um, and that, that video is specifically all about that technique. So do check that out. So tip number four. Um, now this one is an opportunity to be really expressive and actually to go over the top. I really want you to have a go at this and just do too much. What you do is you choose a scene and you just go lines, 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 circle, circle, squares and just get really busy and make a right big mess with your line work. And then after you've done far too much, I want you to look at it and then start to, with a thicker pen or the same pen going over the lines repeatedly, start to pick out your picture from all those lines. Now the reason why this is such a fun tip is because it teaches you not to be too precious. It teaches you not to train yourself that if a line's in the wrong place, the drawing's ruined. Um, so it teaches you, sort of frees you up. It frees you up from the tyranny and the fear of mistakes. But it's fun. It's really fun. And it's definitely worth doing. You know, if you've, particularly if you've drawn a scene before, it's a scene you're familiar with. Take this, this method and have a go at that scene because what you'll find is you'll get a completely different set of outcomes from it. It's a really fun method. And I think not only can it give you some new skills, it can really help with confidence. So to my YouTubers, thanks again for your amazing support. And um, yeah, this channel is growing slowly. It's lovely to have a community of real positive um, artists. And anyway, bonus tip. Now this is a corker. It's a really good one, right? So this tip, I'm going to again ask you to put your big pants on, big girl pants, big boy pants, big people pants. Um, I'm going to get your sketching. I'm going to get your drawing, but you're not allowed to use a pencil. You're not allowed to put any preliminary nunnery marks down no sort of structure, no framework, just get a pen and go for it. If you think, oh, this is going to go wrong, this is too much pressure, I'll, I'll say one thing. 
I'll, 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 I'll just like to say, get some scrap paper, get some cartridge paper. It doesn't have to be fancy paper. And if you're worried about, you know, um, making a mistake with a fancy pen, if it takes the pressure off, get a stick, dip it in ink, get a biro. You know, this is, you can do this in the back of a notebook. Now, the reason why I think it's really important to sketch sometimes with, not always, but sketch sometimes without preliminary pencil work, because it actually ultimately gives you confidence in the long run. Um, it kind of trains you that if you do make a mistake, it doesn't matter. It sort of teaches you that actually if you if you make a, a, if a line ends up where it shouldn't, it teaches you ways of reincorporating that line into the artwork so it's not as a noticeable thing. It teaches you to just sort of roll with the punches in the way that in life, you know, we have to have some resilience. We have to learn to, to sort of cope when things don't work out right first time. And that's the great thing about that technique is, is it really teaches you that the enjoyment of your art isn't the perfect line here or the perfect line there. It's, the, it's actually the doing, it's the overall process. It's not just every single detail and element that you've done in that picture coming in, coalescing into what is the perfect picture, rabbits, perfect picture. It's actually just enjoying the process. I'd also go one step further and say, I'd also go one, sorry, I'm having problems here. I'd also go one step further and I'd say, instead of going pencil, line work, and then watercolor or, or paint medium, get rid of the line work, just go paint. Or get rid of the paint, just go pen. I actually think keeping the process super, super simple uh, and just trying to be loose and free with it can sometimes be a, a really liberating experience. And when you go back to your normal process of, you know, whether it's pe pencil and then pen and then, you know, finishing and, and your normal, you know, complicated pressure process, you actually feel a lot more relaxed because you know that um, you can break it up into stages and, and kind of be quite comfortable with that. So yes, simplify, play and simplify. Don't stop doing what you normally do, but just find a space where you can f f make mistakes, mess about, throw paint up the wall, stick, you know, blue tack on your face, whatever you want to do. Don't do that. All right. Enough ranting from me. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.